Hi there, everybody. Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. We, Lisa Wilsey, yes. I'll get it out. Yeah. Lisa Wilsey is our guest. Lisa is the new executive director. I don't know if I should say new. It's been what, since March? It's been 1st? officially since March 1st. Yeah, so you're yeah. still fairly new. I'm still fairly new. Yeah. And we're going to get into a lot of stuff about the Stanley past, Good. present, and future. But before we do that, I want to say welcome to the show. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. Um, you took over March 1st, Jerry Krause, of course. Yeah. He was the longtime. Um, and you stay in touch? Yep, sure mm -hmm. do. Yeah. In fact, uh, we, he was just in the office a short while ago working on his own ideas. So uh, he's a friend. He's yeah. family and friend. Yeah. The, uh, uh, the Stanley goes back. What a history the Stanley has. Uh, 19, if I remember my history correctly, Lisa, 1928. 1928. Yeah. Movie Palace opened with Ramona. Yeah. And. Yeah. Those th those movie places back then. I mean, there was not much other entertainment. I mean, you that know, that was it. That yeah. was a night out. Yeah, yeah. But it's really fascinating because this type of architecture at the time was so popular, and there were hundreds of these palaces around the country. And when you think about it now, that I think there's about 34 left, and mm -hmm. Utica has one. Yeah, that's a big feat. You know, it's interesting that you say that because I've gone around the country on uh, the train. Yeah. And there's not that many great train stations left in the country, and Utica has one of those, too. It's beautiful. Interesting, huh? It really is beautiful. It's majestic. Yeah. yeah. The, um, uh, when you took over as executive director, did you come in with some set goals that you wanted I to did. accomplish? I did. And, and the interesting thing is this, um, this puzzle, as we've been putting it together, you know, Jerry came on board and stabilized the building, really started getting its doors open again, people familiar with the theater again. And now we're looking at the untapped sectors of revenue generation, whether it's merchandising through e-commerce, whether it's uh, the food and beverage piece, uh, programming, educational programming, entertainment programming for adults. So there's a lot of, the good news is um, there's a lot of different pieces to tap into to find that missing revenue and generate it. Because to me, the building can stand more on its own and just be a stronger venue. Mm. And I think with that all coming together, it takes a little time, but we're moving at qu quite a lightning speed as a group. So I think we're on our way. When, w when you talk about those various pieces, mm -hmm. um, you didn't mention government money. No. Is there any government <laughs> money left anymore? There is, there is. We do go for grants and such, but really the key to, I think, a nonprofit of this magnitude is really relying possibly, you know, a piece of it has to be government aid, whether it's the big capital projects like roofing, facade rehab, uh, redesigning of a facade entry and things like that. But the other piece is the building is capable of ma generating its revenue and it needs to do its part as well. Mm -hmm. And I think we can do that. And the uh, the programming part of it, you're talking about concerts and uh, things it's, like it's that? It's everything. Mm -hmm. um, it's the educational piece that's been missing for a while, Getting using the theater again as a as an educational tool for children in theater and How so How do you forth. do that? Uh, you work with local um, teachers uh, and you start to design a program and with it can either come public funds to help support that through the city especially or it's private whether you know it's parents paying for it or fundraising and so forth and with that we you know we try and look in town for partners because we're a union building where can we go to use classroom space at more affordable mm -hmm. prices but then do performances at the theater yeah uh, speaking of partners, uh, that's what really brought you to U Utica, was it not? The you were <laughs> partnership. What was the title? Partnership. Uh, I was uh, a corporate partnership vice president for the Comets. Right. Yeah. Right. And uh, you were here for the first season, yes? I came on board mid-season inaugural year. Mm -hmm. I was. I remember I, w I spent three days here and saw the snow, and yeah. I met a lot of great people. And I noticed back then it was changing, and we talk about that change that in the last few years. Maybe it's a, you know, I remember coming in the landmark building still was, had a hole in it. And mm. I remember thinking, how are you going to make that beautiful and look at it today? Yeah. It's a central point for downtown. You know, yeah. it's made itself its own mark. I tell people, uh, this is my opinion, I'm interested in yours, that I think things turned around for the city and our area when the comments came to I town. I agree. What, it, uh, what I think it actually marked was um, a, it propelled the city forward with a sense of civic pride. Mm -hmm. And I've said that since I came, it kind of gave everybody a chance to get together, no matter your ethnic or socioeconomic background, to come to a place just to enjoy your city again. And with that come services that are needed, new restaurants, mm -hmm. bars. And so, yeah, it spilled out quickly, I think. 
The, uh, it's interesting that you say that because I look around the auditorium when I'm at a, a game, yeah. which is often, and I do see that. I see uh, uh, people who are uh, millionaires in mm -hmm. there, and I see people that are worrying about uh, payday coming in Absolutely. time. Absolutely, but they're all together. They're, they're all together along. in that builder. <laughs> and I also see people of every political suasion that yeah. you can imagine. That's interesting you say that. It does uh, afford that. But did the Comets experience afford you some things that you could take from that and bring it over to the Stanley? I think so. It helped me generate the relationships with people in town. And one of the things I like about this city, having come from a big city like San Francisco, is people are accessible. So if there is um, an idea to be had, you can reach somebody mm -hmm. very easily here. And it's easy to forge those relationships on a genuine level and really work together to create things. A lot of ideas and just a lot of, you know, just sitting around the table creating what can work for the community. It, it's very unparalleled to any place I've ever been. Mm. And everybody knows everybody. Everybody right? knows everybody <laughs> and everything. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, uh, the uh, programming for the Stanley, yeah. uh, are there some uh, shows upcoming that we yeah. can talk about? We have um, a comedy show coming up at the top of June. It's in a, a group of Italian-American comedians. A few of them ha have actually quite a good uh, resume to boot. One is on the road with Carlin. Another one was a finalist on Lost Comic Standing. Mm -hmm. uh, followed with that on Father's Day weekend, we have the Almond Betts Band. Uh, it's a new band out of the gate. Their album hasn't even dropped yet. Their first single comes out Friday, but it celebrates the 50th year of the Almond Brothers. Mm -hmm. So their sons, a few of them have gotten together and they're on the road and it, they sound really good. Is this uh, something that the Stanley is promoting uh, itself yeah. or is it outside? Mm -hmm. We're doing this one. And we're going to get into that space a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, sponsorship and so forth is always helpful, but at the end of the day, I, the building can do this. In fact, when we come back from this break, let's talk a little bit about that, the relationship with Broadway Theater League, mm -hmm. uh, private promoters and the Stanley putting on its own sure. stuff. Sure. Lisa Wilsey is our guest, executive director since March 1st of the Stanley Theater. Short break, right back.